In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a major new announcement, which is the introduction of Stable Video Diffusion. This is a significant advance for Stable Diffusion and for Stability AI, because this is one of their new foundational models. And they say this is their first foundational model for generative video. Pixavert now offers a range of courses in generative AI, including a beginner's guide to stable diffusion and other courses in generative AI, including SDXL and Comfy UI. If you're interested, use the link in the description to enroll and get started on a new direction. Now the videos we see here are a pretty good example of the sort of short movie moving videos that you can create using this technique and the models presumably will at some stage be expanded to include a, a family of models that will be usable for a variety of purposes. You can see an example here of the kind of use, use cases that might be applicable for some of these models. So this is the beginning of a journey and this might turn out to be something very significant in future. There are two models. One model is the standard model and the second model is the extended model. So the 14 frame model is the shorter one and the longer one, 25 frames, is the SVXT model. We're on the hugging page for the XT models, image to video XT model. And you can see here some more examples of what it can do. As we move down here, we can see some significant uh, pieces of information. First of all, the model was trained to generate 25 frames at 57, six multiplied by 20, tw by multiplied by 1024. Now that's given a context frame of that same size. So we're gonna be loading images of uh, 576 by 1024. We can see some of the comparisons here with other software. The files that we download are these two files. One is for creating images. The other one is for decoding them. One of the points that they make here is that they have fine tuned what they call the widely used F8 decoder for temporal consistency. Now temporal consistency is something which means that as you move from one frame to the next, you, you don't see sudden surprising changes in the generated images. Let me give you an example of what I think temporal inconsistency might look like. And we can see it here. I love this image. I love this moving image here. But if we take a look here, you will notice there's a little bit of a flash there. And I think that flash there is an example of temporal inconsistency. It's something that just appears and disappears from one frame to the next. That's the sort of thing that we're working on with this type of, uh, this type of animation. We want to try to make it as smooth as possible. And although this looks fantastic, I think that's an example of temporal inconsistency. So look out for those sort of artifacts and Hopefully, as the technology improves, temporal inconsistency and maybe even resolution, the, the size of these images will improve over time. Now, there are two download pages. One is for the XT, the longer version, and the other download page is for the standard version, the one that hasn't got XT at the end. Once you've downloaded the files, you'll find you have a, a file that you can upload into the into the a workspace for Comfy UI. And as you upload it, you'll find that you get a, a, an error message and you'll find that there are n several nodes on the graph that need to be updated. Now, some of these you might already have, so you might you may not have the entire four that are missing, but uh, what we need to do is to use the manager to upload these ones. So we'll go to the manager and then we'll go and hit uh, let's update Comfy UI first so that we've got the latest version. Excellent. And then let's um, let's fetch updates for the other models, for the other uh, custom nodes. Okay, I've got one that just needs to be updated and that's the Comfy UI manager. And once that's updated, we need to install the custom, the missing custom nodes. Now, once everything's up to date, we should have something that looks like this. So we've got the checkpoint 
loader here. And the checkpoint loader seems to be loading checkpoints from the main checkpoint directory inside or the main checkpoint folder inside of Comfy UI. And we've got a bunch of things here where we're not going to change anything. But um, what, what I want to do is to make sure that the file size I'm using is 576 in height by 1024, which we've got here. And we could swap this around so we could try a, a portrait. And um, I think what we can actually do is to choose the correct safe tensor. Let's uh, choose this bad boy here. And we can then maybe increase the frames because this is XT. We can perhaps increase that a little bit. 25 will do. So we've got the load image. I've loaded an image. I've kept it fairly simple. Uh, we've opened up the checkpoint. We've got the, uh, what they call the video linear CFG guidance. So, uh, Okay, we'll go with that. I think guidance uh, is included twice in that particular uh, in that particular node, and um, we have some settings here. Now these settings, you could probably start off by leaving these exactly as they are. What I'm going to say first of all for the settings here. Well, the level of frames, the frames per second, seems fairly small at six, but we have just got. 25 frames for the longer version and 14 frames for the smaller, for the shorter version of the uh, SVD. So six is reasonable in that situation. If we were put, to put it up to 60, the thing would last half a second or something. So leave that as it is. And I'll generally speaking, just leave these as they are. Maybe just change the height and width as necessary. We have, uh, obviously this guy will leave this where it is for the time being. And what we can do is to move over to the case sampler, which is um, one where we've got the number of steps, CFG, Euler, Scheduler and Denoise. You could, if you are just testing this, because it could take a little bit of time, just change the steps to a smaller number for your first run. Let's change that to 10 for the first run. And then when we come to this save animated web P, this allows us to save an, uh, a WebP. Um, a WebP is kind of like a JPEG, but it moves. Um, it's very difficult to, to explain. It's a bit like a GIF, but more JPEG quality. And uh, it should contain the metadata to recreate this from the, from the, uh, from the project that we created, reconstructing this uh, particular graph. Let's go ahead and change this to SVD. getting used to the lingo and the FPS is going to be 10 FPS. So we're moving from um, 6 FPS to 10 FPS here. Uh, lossless, no, we don't want lossless and the quality can be 85. That's fine. You can reduce that a little bit if you want to. Method, let's choose the, let's choose the default. That should be fine. Now, what we then do is we obviously cue the prompt. Uh, and then come back and just adjust the steps. I'm going to reduce the steps to one so that we get it quickly done. And then we can come back and adjust it to 20 as we should. Now, once all the equations have run, we'll end up with an, uh, basically a small video. In this case, you can see the fog in this image just clearing away one step at a time. And uh, this should save. This is a save uh, animated node. So it should save this automatically with the prefix. However, if you want to save, you can choose, you can actually choose save image and it should save the, the file uh, as you instruct. Now, what we can then do is to maybe change the image around a little bit, change the number of steps, maybe take that back to 20 and get something a little bit different and try something out. So this was one of the more interesting results that I got. And I think the experimentation will be a lot easier if you have a powerful GPU. After all, with a research preview like this, the, the whole point is to see what sort of results you can get, what the advantages are, the disadvantages of the of the software. I did notice sometimes you did get, if you notice here, there are some specs which come and go, and they didn't seem to follow a more a very logical pattern of uh, 
of, of movement in the, in the, in the image. So that was one thing I noticed. And I also noticed sometimes towards the end of a render, the, the cohesion sometimes broke down a little bit, but overall, I think this is fascinating. This is pretty cool. Um, things like temporal cohesion, this is stuff I've been looking at and, and learning about for, for many years. So it's actually fascinating to see uh, software which does this and to see how it manipulates things. I think the long term goal is maybe to introduce LoRa files to control the video and to introduce a little bit of control in terms of how the camera moves around. So hopefully you'll have plenty of fun testing this out and seeing how it works. Oh, 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 oh,